Hi, how are you, Ernie? All right. So I'm looking forward to this new Star Wars movie. You know, I heard there's a lot of great merchandise. Oh, there. yes, there is, absolutely. I'm looking for, actually, I heard there's a lightsaber dildo available. Yup, and I want to lube it up and stick it in my Death Star. <laughs> Welcome to the pew. Welcome to the pew. Where everybody's leaving yeah. <laughs> to do the show because the cigarettes are more important. Um, I can relate to that. Um, we were just talking about uh, about how dead this place is on a Saturday night, and it made me think maybe we should do the maybe pew we should here. Maybe should be here because then it would be <laughs> still dead on a Saturday night, but we would have let's do it with um, ten more people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it would be kind of fun, I think. It's a very living roomy kind of feeling, and we could be sitting right here, and people could be like walking around. It would be a nice kind of atmosphere, don't you think? Yeah. We're going like to pitch good, it. It's a good setup. We're going to pitch it to them. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, they don't recoil in horror the way the standard I mean, hotel look, is. Look at these rooms out there. We could have a room like that. Yeah. You know? Yes, I'm down for it. Yeah, I'm up for it. I, I, I would like to do it. Um, okay, so but we're. First, we will first we're going to talk about some, some big penis. dicks. <laughs> Yes, that, perhaps that should be our pitch to Yota. Can we come and talk about dicks? <laughs> um, I'm a gay serial killer, and I want to talk about dicks for me. <laughs> um, and it's yeah. all really funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To us. Yeah, you can and see by the look on Ego's face how, how they're going to react to that. Um, so, we're here to talk about penis enlargement. Now, did you know that penis enlargement is very important to people in prison? It's funny because I just got this text on the way here in the subway, I got this text from the, this Lady Lori, um, and she, we were talking about, um, oh, Botox and Jupiter, because she didn't know the difference between Joe Botox, and I was like, yeah, exactly. Oh my God. And, so I explained it to her, and she said um, that um, for the, you know, thanks for the advice and she said that um, if she was there, she would give me a facial and a scrub, and she said, I would even enlarge your penis with a parachute and weight for free. Um, and it's interesting because that's what they use, that's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, en enlarging your pe penis with parachute. Now, why is that important in prison? Um, I I don't know how important it is in prison, but I mean, I, why are people some, doing it? Why because people... they have a lot of downtime. <laughs> they have a lot of downtime, and it was weighing on their consciousness. <laughs> and. <laughs> And so um, what better time than the next yeah, 10 years yeah. to enlarge my penis by an inch or but two? But that's, that's true. That's, that's, I mean, I know you are being uh, facetious there, but the reality is that you have 10, maybe you do have 10 years, and these things take a while to, to uh, um, you know, germinate. So, is that the word, germinate? Yes. Well, presu presumably it's, uh, take a while it's about as slow as the, the continental movements. It is very slow. And um, so you need a lot of time. You need many years to do this. And um, if it works at all, there's question. There's a you know, there's it's questionable whether it works. Well, at the all. the Village Voice just had a front page story about how men are recreating their foreskin by hanging weights on their penises and pulling down the, the skin that's above the. Well, head that would make more for the, sense for the ones who were circumcised. You know, that would make course. more sense. And and, and, um, they, and it, apparently it's possible you can eventually grow I, it. I think that would make sense because the foreskin is just that. It's just it's skin. Just skin. And You're skin stretching. stretches. Yeah. So um, now, the penis skin also stretches, um, and if you are if you have more skin, then there's more uh, room for the blood to go more in. More room for growth. Yeah. Well, there's more room for the blood to go in when you get an erection for it to enlarge. So um, there's a word for that when the blood uh, to uh, engor engorge. Engorge. And yeah. So um, it, that makes sense too. But um, you, you might you know you walk down in prison, you like walk down the um, the aisle, and on either side there's like guy after guy after guy with like just standing there with like weights on their dick, like they're just like right down. So um, I just don't get it. Why it would even be important of all the things because of, of all because their priorities? Presumably they're going home. So this is like in their, in their downtime. They have nothing else. Perhaps to do. that's why they even led a life of crime because they felt you know well they felt inadequate well, because yes, of their penises. It's, that's very true because you know I I noticed in prison that if you look look at the lunch line or the dinner line, the mess hall line um, the and look at the the average height of people they're very short and there are a lot of people who are short and with big egos like the Napoleonic complex there are a lot of people with men like that in prison. And um, so I'm absolutely positive that plays a role in this somewhere. So small dick and sh you know under five, you know they're like five foot two and they've got small dicks and you know 
so you know, and the scum of the earth. Who are you gonna? Who are you to tell me that I'm? You know, so yeah. Who would have known? Well, now you do. Now you do. Thanks to the pew. We'll be right back. Yep. And now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to the pew. Welcome back to the pew. Where we're going to take a little technology break. We're on TechSpot.com. Will death always be inevitable? Well, uh... Not according to TechSpot. Who am I, the company, um, doesn't think so. Doesn't think that death is inevitable. No. Now, why is that? Because they are going to put your consciousness on a microchip and implant it into a robot. This guy, the guy who runs this company is kind of cute, don't you think? Yes. Um, I accept death. I'm not afraid of it, but I'm not 100% sure I'm going to die one day, he says. Um, and he's the founder Nor of... Nor am I. He's the founder of Who Am I? Because I am going to live long enough to see the singularity. Right, which is in 2047, I think, right? Right, so, so for all I know, I'm going to be one of the first human guinea pigs. guy's jo Josh Buck. Bocanegra. Boca Negra. Boca Negra. Yeah. He has a company called Humai, H-U-M-A-I, and they um, are um, coming up with this uh, company that it's a Microchip startup. Microchip Consciousness Transfer. Right. And they will apparently take your consciousness, put it on a chip, and, and then... Put it into an artificial body. Right. The artificial body is, well... I it's not fabulous. Oh, yeah, no. I was going to say it's kind of unnecessary, but it isn't because you're going to need to... Well, well, it actually is unnecessary. Well, it would be necessary for me because I would need it to wear outfits. You would need it. Well, yes. How else no, am no, I going to no. wear an outfit? See, that's the thing. That's the thing about the singularity is that as we go near, closer, and we get closer and closer to the singularity, these things should fall out of favor. Oh no, no, no. Well, no, 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 no. You will, you will dress up, but you will dress up in your, in your mind. On the astral plane. You will only be fabulous in your mind. So, in other words, it will be the same as you are now. But you will not be interacting with people. Only in your mind you will be interacting with people. No, you will think that you're interacting with people, and it will be indistinguishable from actually acting with people, interacting with people. So. You won't even notice that you're only uh, thinking about it. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna like the future. Um, I want a body. I mean, if you don't know, I want a cyborg. You are body. gonna have a body. You're gonna have the body that you always preferably, wanted. Preferably, preferably one like Blade Runner. You will have a body like you always wanted, but it will not be a real body. You will just and and perception is reality. So your perception is that you have that body. Other people's perception is that you have that body. So you have that body. I mean. But the, the irony is that nobody will care anymore because when everybody can have that, and we already see signs of it happening now, when everybody can have it, it's no longer worth anything. You know, now that everybody has cell phones, they're not worth anything. A long time ago, cell phones were worth something. Now, when everybody can have, when everybody can, can get Botox, then it's not worth anything. Then nobody cares. When everybody can have a perfect body, there'll be nothing special about a perfect body. So nobody will care anymore. We'll have other things to worry about. And what like, will that be? Well, um, did I scratch my ship today? <laughs> did somebody scratch my microchip? <laughs> because I'm going like this. I'll forget. <laughs> did somebody? Did somebody? Did somebody? Did somebody? So it'll be like going into a K hole. It'll be like your chip going into a K hole. Somebody scratch your microchip. Yeah, that'll be the new drug. Somebody will. Will you please scratch my microchip? <laughs> and it'll put me into a K hole. On that note, bitches want to know. Stylus Matt is asking what we think uh, was the source of inspiration for the gore horror influence on the Club Kid look. Now what? The gore horror influence. Yeah, what was our inspiration? What were we inspired what, by? What, what do we think the inspiration was for it? Well, I, I would say the goth movement from the early 80s was. Oh! Plus no. horror oh, oh, oh yeah. Um, not the goth movement so much for me. No, I, but m for me... But, well, for you, don't you but, tell me what I was inspired by. But for a lot of the Club Kids, it was the goth. Don't goths. you speak for a lot of the Club Kids. I was inspired um, by the 60s Blood Feast movies and uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis and um, George Romero. And Sacred, and that's what Sacred Boy was inspired by. Yes. And he was one of the leaders of the Club Kid Gloria. Uh, well, yes, well, because yeah. he actually, had, Gloria, he was like he actually had the skills to yeah. create or horror movie he, effects. Right. And, um, yes, and... Um, he went to school for that effect. Yeah. Other uh, Club Kids um, looked like horror movies, um, but... Maybe not this one. Well, it was. <laughs> um, 
But a Sacred was very good at it, and so was Astro, and um, Christopher was good at it, Desi. Um, and yeah, we were all inspired by Fangoria and, um, and jo- George Romero and um, uh, Lucio, Lucio Fulci and all the... Um, by the way, Lucio Fulci sent, uh, Lucio Fulci's daughter sent us a message um, a couple weeks ago. Um, a shout out. Yeah, shout out to Lucio Fulci's daughter. Mm-hmm. See you next time. Bye.